no matter how many videos I make and advice that I give to everyone that the thing you need to do is get on a plane, come down to Nicaragua, rent a place and spend some time, everybody who writes to me has the same mindset, that they wanna buy a place from abroad. And I wanna talk about this a little bit, not about do you wanna live in Nicaragua, not about do you know where you wanna live, I wanna talk about the actual process of physically buying a house, land, or whatever, and how you should think about going about doing that because even still, it seems like everyone has the same idea of what they wanna do. We're gonna dig into that right after the bump. There are a few things that I talk about as often and as adamantly as the importance of coming down to Nicaragua and spending time. Just relax. Don't worry about getting residency. Don't worry about getting a car. Don't worry about getting the citizenship. Don't worry about buying a house. Take all those things off the table. Get down here on a tourist visa, if you're from a country that allows it, spend some time, rent a place, either an Airbnb or a hotel, or find a long-term rental. If, you, if you're really sure that this is where you wanna be, get, come down, get a place, start buying furniture, like really start spending some time in the place you wanna be, and then start making the big decisions, the same as you would in any other situation to any other country anywhere in the world. So what I just had happen was someone just sent me an email and they, so they're in a situation where absolutely they know 100% they wanna be living in Nicaragua. They know 100% that they can, that they'll have no paperwork problems, they have everything they need, and they know where they want to be. They know the country fairly well. So all of those things that a lot of people normally struggle with, right? So many people that I give advice to are in a situation where they they think they wanna live in Nicaragua, but they haven't spent any or very much time here. They think they wanna be in such and such a place, but they don't actually know because they've never spent time here. And so they're just watching my channel and saying, oh, that place looks nice, or he described this place as nice, and I think that's where I wanna be. And they're trying to make huge life decisions based off of what I hope are good descriptions and nice videos of the places, but it's not the same as actually living there. The way of knowing exactly what it feels like, what the weather feels like in different towns, what the people are like, what the nightclub scene is, what the restaurants are like, who has exactly the place that you wanna eat every day, aren't things that I can easily describe to you. I can give you some pointers on where to start, where to look, uh, and I'll do my best, but nothing is going to actually beat you coming down and spending some time. So for most people, that's the stuff that I'm trying to get them to do. Come down and really make solid decisions. Make sure you know what neighborhood makes sense for you. Because a lot of people say, they watch my channel, they're like, I wanna live in Sutiava, but the reality is many of them don't wanna live in the barrio. And it seems different because I love it. And so they're like, well, Scott loves it. It must be a place I'll love. And some people absolutely come down and love the places that I love. But some people come down and are like, who would live like this? Why are you doing this to yourself, right? And it's just, everyone has a different reaction to different places. But in this particular situation, we have something a little bit different. And that is someone who has all those things solved. They know all the locations and the deep understanding of the country. They're just looking for a permanent house, but they're currently living abroad. So we can treat them as being Nicaraguans who are simply English speaking and living abroad and looking for just the right house. And how do they go about doing that? But the reality is, is even for this situation, the advice is actually the same. Remember that real, estates, real estate agents don't really exist. It's not a regulated thing here yet. There is no structure for it. And even if there were, there is no uh, multiple listing service like we have in North America. So the idea that a real estate agent is gonna know all the things that are available and be able to point you to, that doesn't exist and never will. Not in the foreseeable future, that is not a thing. So that need for finding a place can't be met by having a real estate agent. And if anything, a real estate agent is going to get in the way because they have a need to get paid and they can only get paid if they get you to buy a place that they represent. And so a lot of the places that you just are going to call, they don't represent and they need to steer you away from that or they're going to lose a lot of time and money. So they can't do that. So it's very important for you to avoid that process just in general, but that means you can't look from abroad. There's no listing that you can look at. There's no listing that someone else can look at to see all the things that are available in an area and, and tell you, well, here's what's available and here's how they, they can't do that, right? No human can, and so you can't approach the system like that's a possibility. You have to just internalize it. That will not be the case in any of our lifetimes that there will be a listing service that will have this definitive list or even a nearly definitive list of what is available. Even if we had a list of everything that someone has said is available, it wouldn't come close to what is actually available. There, there's just no 
mechanism to make that happen in the way that the market works here. Now, if you're coming to the big cities, there are at least areas and, and some information, like you can start to piece together a picture of what might be available. But if you're going into a more rural area, you're looking for something off the beaten path, the idea that you're going to be able to figure out what is available is going to be astronomically hard. There's very little to be done except for driving and possibly walking street after street after street and seeing what's out there. And in many cases, actually knocking on doors and saying, look, I don't know if this place is available, but I'd be interested in at least discussing it. Right. A lot of the places that could be for sale are not in a position where they could reach out to anybody and let them know that it's for sale. So at best, there's word of mouth, but you've got to get into the community that you want to be in and talk to people, and they will only have so much information. And all of that takes time, and a lot of people don't want to talk to you until you've been in a community for a little while. When we were looking here, yes, there were some places we were able to get in Leon right away, but the best places, the really good land, the really good deals didn't exist until we had been in the community and people knew us. And then locals would come to us and be like, hey, I know a guy, he'd like to talk to you. And it takes time. If you try to, to jump that process, you're very li likely going to miss out on the good opportunities, or the good deals certainly the good prices, and, and your selection is going to be much smaller. So what do you do? There's really only one process. There's no way to short circuit this. The only way to short circuit is by overspending on a very small selection. If you're absolutely in a position where you must buy, and I don't know any situation that would make you need to buy right away, but if you're in a position, and especially, I understand there, there's a little bit, when you get into the beach zones, there's some specialty land that can be kind of it's different, right? You're, you're basically in enclaves, you're dealing with a bunch of tourists, and they're trading tourist properties back and forth. That's kind of an exception. We're talking about actual Nicaragua here, where you want to be in Nicaraguan towns, Nicaraguan cities, buying and selling with Nicaraguans at Nicaraguan prices, not at enclave prices, okay? Not in not in enclosed uh, uh, property prices, but, but regular homes. Or you at least want to consider them, right? In those cases, the only process that is going to, to function well unless you get just outrageously lucky, is you need to show up, you need to spend time. And that time is not weeks, that time is months or possibly years. You rent, whether that's Airbnb or a long-term rental, long-term rentals are better, put together some furniture, start buying things that you will want later when you do own a house. It's like a, a, a process of preparing. Take that time, get to know the community, get to know the people in the community, walk the streets, Drive the streets, get to know the streets outside of town, inside of town, everything. Figure out what's available. Now, some of you, you just want to live in, in El Centro, wherever it is you want to be. And that limits how much you have to look at. And that's going to make things easier for you. But if you want to be in the barrios, that's going to expand how much you need to look at by huge amounts. If you want to be in the, in the repartos, that's going to expand what you want to look at by a huge amount again. If you want to be in the countryside, that's going to expand what you're willing to look at again by huge amounts. I've been here in Leon for three years. And I am constantly exploring the city, its barrios, its neighborhoods. I go all over. And in doing that, there is possibly no person who knows on foot, up close and personal, as much of the city as I do. It's probably not true, but it could be true. I, I am told all the time, there is no one who explores the city the way that I do. Now, I do it with a camera, so I really stand out but there are not people walking from one side of the city to the other on a regular basis. There's not people just constantly exploring little out of the way places. People who have grown up here generally don't go from barrio to barrio exploring and comparing the barrios. They have a few that they work with all the time because of like a job or just a restaurant they go to or a friend or something, but they don't generally just explore the barrios. It's very unique that I do that. And so I have a visibility into what exists in Leon, what the prices should be, what the neighborhoods are like, what's safe and what's less safe, what's desirable, less desirable, how easy it is to get from a place to other things you may want to go to, which places are really isolated in awkward ways. There are whole neighborhoods that have no good ingress and egress options, and they're just isolated out there. They may be beautiful spots, but getting in and out could be a huge pain and you wouldn't like it. And some places are not even accessible by car. There's whole neighborhoods that you can only get by walking down relatively rough pathways and there's no way to get an ambulance in there there's no way to get a car in there there's no way to get a shipment of big things in there those are things that very few people know exactly what's out there to consider and even with and even with all the experience and all the time and all the the exploration 
that I have done over the last three years, there is so much that I have not seen, so much I don't know, so much yet to explore just in Leon, let alone regions outside of Leon, right? It's, it's so much work. So you need time. Now, I'm not saying you're going to put in three years and walk every street. You're going to drive. You're going to get to know big neighborhoods. You're going to narrow things down relatively quickly. You're going to know, like, how far out in the country do you want to be? How close to the center of the city you want to be? But that still, still takes a little bit of time. But assuming you even knew that you wanted to be in the barrio of Guadalupe, you got to walk those streets. You got to eat at those restaurants. You got to get to know the people and talk and be like, you know, I might be interested. Maybe, you know, if something was to come up, uh, can I look at some places and see what houses are like here to get an idea of what I might be figuring out? And then to figure out what a good price is, all those things are going to take time and you're always going to be a little bit in the dark, but you'll build up a lot of knowledge quickly. And in doing that, you'll, you'll move forward and, and be able to make good decisions. And you'll be able to walk up and talk to people and say, well, I know this place doesn't say it's for sale, but it kind of looks like it might be good for me. I'd be up for talking about it if you're interested, right? It, it's, you have to have that time to do it. I can't even imagine trying to do it on less than a six month scale. Even, even if you really, really knew of properties you were interested in, generally the process of negotiating, the process of actually purchasing, all those things take quite a bit of time. And if you're not here, they're gonna take much longer, if they're even possible. So you really wanna be here if, if at all possible. And remember, most people who are looking to buy want to be here, so buying from abroad doesn't really make sense because you wanna be here, so get here, solve that part of the problem, and then improve your purchasing by being here. And of course, if you're going to buy from abroad, it's going to raise your prices. It's going to raise your price to your lawyer. It's going to raise your price to all the people you have to hire to assist you. It's going to cause you to be in the dark about a bunch of things going on with the property. And the property will probably figure out that you're remote and negotiate much harder because they know that you have a degree of funds that someone who is negotiating from inside the country may not have. And so there's a lot of reasons that you want to be here. Even if everything was going to go smoothly from abroad, you want to be here to ensure that you get the best value for the process you've already had. But assuming you want to come down and look, it's going to take time. You want to be here so you can really do the looking, really do the negotiating, and all of that is going to take time and then the process of actually closing on the property and taking over the property and, and possession and moving in and all that. All those things take time and realistically, a lot of time. It is extremely rare that so it can happen, but extremely rare that someone's gonna go out, find a property right away, make a deal right away to purchase. If you're renting, you can do things pretty quickly, but to purchase a property and do it really quickly is very much the outlier and there's so many legal processes. There's so many like investigating uh, the land, checking the deeds, do, dealing with the banks and all that. That stuff is going to take time and generally works much better if you're here. Uh, and many, many deals fall through. Be aware that this is just because of the very manual process, because of the very non-standard process and because of a lot of problems with deeds, which sounds scary, but it shouldn't be. It's simply that there are processes you need to go through and some people are not in a position of being able to sell the houses that they live in. And your, your lawyer should be walking you through this process. It should be a normal thing, but you can't get overly emotionally tied to a property until it's yours. Because it's very easy to find a place, fall in love with it, be really passionate, and then find out that it's not actually available no matter what the person living in it wants to do. And you're just out of luck and you need to walk away and find something that is actually legally available. That is the unfortunate truth of much of the land in Nicaragua. We talk about that a lot. The government can't just step in and seize places. People can't just take over. It is not that easy. And so there's a lot of properties that end up in a disputed state or a undocumented state. And those you just have to walk away from or, or, and I know people have done this, commit to a major process of cleaning up the deed, as we say, which often requires going to a, a large number of previously unknown deed holders, talking to them, paying them off, getting them released, getting a court to say things are clear, whatever. There are definitely processes that you can do for that, but there are a lot of work and doing it from remote is all but impossible. Those are things you need to be here. You need to oversee. You need to decide whether they make sense. And it just, every little thing that you will do really can be done remotely, but shouldn't be. You will suffer greatly by trying to do that. At the end of the day, Nicaragua is a country that really prioritizes patience. It is a tranquilo lifestyle. Things move at their own pace, and some things move really quickly. You need to get your plumbing fixed. Someone will be over later today. You need to get a wall built. Someone will be here this afternoon. Things will sometimes move really quickly, but other things like 
the paperwork for your house, getting a deed checked out, looking for a property, negotiating a property. It could take weeks or months just to locate the right person to talk to. It could take weeks once you've located them to convince them to actually talk to you. Once you go through a long process, which will probably be repeated multiple times because you will unlikely just close on the first place. You never know that the price that they're asking is something they will actually accept. You never know if they list the price for sale, if they actually mean it. A lot of places that are listed for sale aren't actually for sale. It's just that one of the deed holders demanded that they sell the place. One of the others wants to hold on to it. So one lists it and the other just says no. All right, so these things go on quite a bit because there's nothing official. You can't, you can't file against them in court and say, well, they listed in this service and that says that they, they're beholden to accepting that deal. There's nothing like that. Probably isn't anywhere else either, but there certainly isn't here. And, and so you easily can end up in a situation where even having find, found places that you want, that you may not be able to close on them ever or quickly. And because everything here is just tranquilo, everything is, okay, we're going to take our time. We did this. We'll talk to you again next week. We'll get back to you. You need the ability to wait on things, but you also need the ability to react. And so by being here, not only can you relax and spend your time getting to know the community and, and getting stronger and stronger in your position to close on the property you're interested in or to be prepared to get another one, but also you're here to move things along as quickly as possible. When someone says, oh, well, we need to do this paperwork. We need to get this thing signed. We got to, instead of going around and sending things by mail and, and trying to sign remotely and doing power of attorney, you're available to run down the street, sign papers and move things on to the next step so that you're not a holdup. By being impatient, which is the biggest problem, I think, with everything that we talk about, the problems that people run into with Nicaragua is that they are, they're coming from a place of great impatience. The United States, Canada, much of Europe, we have a very impatient culture. We're always upset when we're waiting for people. We're always looking for, for things to happen instantly. And Nicaragua and most of Latin America doesn't think that way. And you're not going to reap the benefits of a relaxed culture by acting in a non-relaxed way. You're just setting yourself up for disappointment because when you're impatient, the lack of impatience with everything else becomes infuriating. But if you're able to, to relax, if you're able to say, okay, I know this is gonna take a long time. I'm gonna do my part to move it along for sure, but I'm also going to rent a place. I'm going to live in the place I wanna be. I'm gonna become part of the neighborhood. I'm gonna become part of the culture. I'm gonna do everything I can to to get the parts I can do done, but I'm not gonna worry about the things that are out of my control. I'm not going to try to race and do things impossibly fast. I'm not going to anticipate that magic is going to happen and things are gonna happen really quickly. I'm going to take it easy. I'm going to relax. I am going to let the process do its thing. And then when it's done, I'm gonna get the best deal. The fewest things are likely to go wrong and I'm gonna have a place that I love and I can move into, and I'll be as best prepared for that as possible. I already own furniture, I already have plans for the land, I will already have right my connections in the community, I will already own a truck, whatever you need to do, right? All those things will take time. This is the most important thing, I think, is, is this, this concept of stop the rushing, stop the impatience, stop trying to do things from abroad. In almost all cases, I know there's exceptions, but in almost all cases, the answer is come down, become located here, move here, spend your time here, and do everything from a position of being here. Don't try to do things from abroad. Don't put the cart before the horse. Don't try to buy before you rent. Don't try to move before you've explored. Just come down and start whatever processes you need to do. Start exploration, start purchasing, start integrating, start residency, whatever it is that makes sense for your situation, the chances that doing it from abroad will be the thing to do are, is extremely low. I do realize there are people who want to own property here, but they're in a position of they haven't retired yet, they only want to retire here, or they need to get a bunch of ducks in a row. In general, that doesn't make a lot of sense. There are situations, I understand, you want to own a house that you're going to have for 50 years, and after 20 more years of work, you're going to retire to it eventually. And okay, but even that, you want to rent down here, spend lots of time, and really get to know. The last thing you want to do is commit to a house you're going to have for 50 years that it turns out you don't really like because you were being impatient and bought it from abroad and never really researched your options. And the moment you move here full-time, you go, what did we do? Why do we have this house? Let's sell it. Oh, we can't. The market doesn't, you know, there's, there's just no market for that. We can't get the place that we want because things have changed. 
You don't want that to happen. So it's, it's extremely rare. So rare. And I say this, and everyone's like, wait, well, yeah, but I'm the rare person. You are not, right? You are the rule, not the exception. You want to come down, spend your time, be patient, and, and not rush, right? Anytime you feel that you're rushing, anytime you're like, how am I going to do this in this amount of time? Stop and say, wait, why am I saying this amount of time? Why am I putting a time frame on a process that really isn't time boxable? That's, that's an alert that should go off in your head. Nicaragua doesn't allow for that. The United States allows for that. You want to you move to the United States? You want to give yourself two weeks to find a house and, and buy a house and get at least enough paperwork done that you can then go back to wherever you are and, and come back to it later? Yes, you can do that in the United States normally. But in Nicaragua, that's not an option. That's not realistic at all. And so removing this American mindset, removing this Canadian mindset and saying property purchasing is a long, slow process. Every single stage of it is long and slow. The thing that I need to do is be there to oversee it. I can't even imagine trying to do property deals without at least a team that is here full time, let alone me being here full time. It would be madness, right? And I've lived here a long time. I have a lot of experience in the country, um, you know, over a period of nearly a decade to, to think that I could race those. Pro I couldn't, I couldn't possibly do it. Right. And everyone asks me, can you help me do this thing? I'm like, I couldn't do it. I couldn't even, I I'm nowhere close that I could help someone else do it where they don't have as much information. Like I know myself, I know which places I like. I know which towns I like. I don't need to go visit them to know a lot about different parts of the country, different parts of different towns. I could make a lot of decisions really quickly remotely that other people can't. And I couldn't do it. So I think that may be the most telling thing, right? You're trying to do things in many cases. The majority of you have an idea that you right now will do things that I could never start to do with the time and experience and, and effort that I've put into it. Having bought property here multiple times, having invested here multiple times, having lived here multiple times over a large amount of time with a lot of experience, being very involved in my local communities, having lived in multiple cities, talking to people from all over, working with people from all over, being involved in helping other people find homes and find communities. The things that people often want are so far out of reasonable reach, it's really hard to explain just how hard these things are. And then when people live here, they're like, oh, yeah, how could you possibly do things faster? And you're like, yeah, that's, that's just how it is. So relax, take your time, come down, assume you're going to rent, you're going to spend time before you can buy, before you can really commit, before you make those big decisions, you got to move down and do it in person. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe. If you'd like to support the channel, you can buy me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. As always, share on social media, tell your friends about the show, and I will see all of you tomorrow. And I'll just pop some extra videos up here on the screen. If you could hit one and let it play in the background, that would do. That would, that would be great. I'd really appreciate it. Have a good day.